Greetings, dear friends. Welcome back to Six Degrees of Connection, the daily live broadcast on Alatra TV. Every day we travel from one country to another in order to learn more about history, traditions, culture, and most interesting facts. And of course, we ask the most important question, how people envision creative and constructive society, society where everyone could feel happily and live comfortably in all areas of life. And of course, to do that, we use the latest technologies. That's how we can go online today and see our guests from different countries. And we use the rule of six handshakes. This rule means that we all connected with each other within five or less social connections. So let's prove that this rule works. And today we are traveling to the most ethnically diverse country in the world. Some people call it African Switzerland. Uh, Uganda is the home to beautiful beaches, lakes, the most powerful waterfall in the world the tallest mountain range in Africa. We're traveling to Uganda. Thank you everyone for joining us today. Today, uh, we ha I have uh, with me my co-host Tatiana and my co-host Derek. And uh, Tatiana, would you introdu introduce our guest? Yes, yeah, sure. Today we have with us Arthur and Andrew, and they are both from Uganda. Welcome, guys, and welcome to live broadcast on Alatra TV. Dear viewers, if you want to be the part of our next live broadcast, please send us an email using the address you're seeing right now on the screen. And don't forget to share with this video using two hashtags Alatra Unites and creative society. So let's start. And the first question, dear guests, we would like to ask you, what do you love most about your country? What makes you proud of it? Who would like to start? Andrew or Arthur? Yes, yeah. thank you, yeah. I'm very proud of Uganda. Uh, one, because uh, since I learned about the geography of Uganda in school, since primary, I fell in love with it. That time, I didn't know much about the world, but uh, knowing about Uganda is features in class. Though I did not move a lot uh, uh, in Uganda, but uh, as you grow up and I move and I see Uganda, I fell in love with it. I, I also love uh, the peaceful where it is. I've gone to South Sudan, I've gone to other places. I, I see that also somehow Uganda is peaceful. And uh, that is one thing I love about it. I also love its features. I've been to Northern, U I mean to Western Uganda, that is Fort Porto. It is very beautiful. And uh, when I move and I see the, 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 the game parks, uh, the, the animals in the parks as I go to Kampala, the capital city of Uganda, I, I, I fell in love with it. And that makes me proud to be Ugandan. Thank you very much. Mm. What about you, Arthur? Okay, the one, the one thing I like about my country, it's actually I love the people in my country. The way they coexist, the way they work together, like to achieve like certain goals, be it political, be it social goals. Uganda is made of all like it consists of so many tribes. And this is something that is actually like so beautiful. You find that there are over 14 tribes in this particular country. And the way people cooperate, you realize that uh, we, you get to communicate even when you move to the far parts of a country. Because like, okay, it's not something that, it's something that actually draws my attention, how people get to unite knowing that they're under one umbrella and that is Uganda. Then secondly, I wouldn't say I love so much like um, the, the climate. No, I wouldn't love the climate because it's like, it's like similar to the climate in the, to the other countries in the tropics. But then 
there is something about this climate because, okay, basically it is a beautiful, I don't know, it's, the climate is beautiful and like, it's something that I would be so proud of and, and maybe like, I appreciate it, that's all. Thank you so much, Arthur. Is that right, Arthur, for sharing? Um, you you really pitched out a nice point of how, like, Ugandans um, like work together despite of them coming from different tribes and regions. I think, and that's one of the things we as uh, ultra unites we look at. We want to see us being united together despite of our differences. So, thank you so much for sharing. And actually, our designers prepared some collages for today. But uh, before we start uh, looking at the beautiful pictures of Uganda, which uh, our guests uh, welcome to comment on them, uh, I want to, to say for our viewers that they can also participate in our broadcast. And to the video uh, of this today's broadcast, we have link which you can follow and answer the question, what do you associate with Uganda with? Or what do you know about this country? Please answer and we'll show your answers after the first part of our broadcast. So uh, let's start. And uh, I want to ask for technical support to show us pictures of Uganda. Yeah, guys, and feel free to comment on them. Does everyone see the pictures? Yes. Yes, uh, seen. Uh, it's, uh, there are some cities on the pictures. We can see that this is a really green country. <laughs> yeah, it's a green yes. country. Even the cities with uh, high-rise buildings uh, still has uh, many trees between them. Yes, uh, this is Kampala. Wow. Yeah, that's beautiful. the beautiful scenery. No wonder it's called the Switzerland of Africa. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm not sure, is it that uh, the most powerful waterfall which I read about uh, is on the picture. Um, I think that waterfall up is um, it's called Sipi Falls, and that's found in um, far east. That's Kapchora district. It's like it's such a beautiful fall, and it has featured on the New York Times magazine and everywhere. So that's all the beauty of Uganda. And I actually see some mountains on the pictures, uh, which um, I know that Uganda has the tallest mountain range uh, in Africa, and they also called as the uh, mountains of the moon. Maybe I our think, guest can um, <laughs> share with yeah, us. Yeah, like about one it. of our guests comes from a place that's near the mountains of the moon. Portro, so that's near Mountain Renzo, so you could share more about it. Yes, uh, Mount Renzo, which is uh, in western Uganda, in Fort Porto, is considered to be Mount of the Moon because um, it has snow peaked. It is snow peaked actually. Uh, on top, you you find uh, the snow, and so to at least uh, occasionally go up. So they go mountain climbing, they go up the, 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 the mountain. It's a very nice scenery when you see, even from Porto town, you can you can see that it's, it's beautiful. And the weather around there is it's so nice. It, it's very, very cool. We, we really enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah, it's so amazing. What a beautiful planet we live on. Mountains of the moon. 
there's actually a university in the name in the names of that mountain. It's called uh, Mountains of the Moon University. It's where I did oh, my wow. bachelor's in, in education. Yes. Mm -hmm. Asa, do you have anything to say about Mountains of the Moon? Not really, but I think I have something to say about the cultures. Oh, the way okay. yeah, the pictures that are on the screen, there's so much I can say about them. Like I said, Uganda is made up of so many people, like so many like tribes. So people have different cultures. But then um, the, the greatest thing is that they're all proud of their, like, of, of their cultures and they love it so much. The children in schools and those that are at home, they are nurtured in a way that they get to embrace their cultures. They get to love them, the traditional dances, the stories, the history. It's like all interesting. Um, let me see if I can identify one. Um, the right side, the right side of a screen. I think that's the Chiganda culture. That's I think the Maganda dance. And then in the middle, yeah, in the middle, I think this is also the Chiganda dance, given the way mm. they, they are positioned themselves to dance or the Chinyankore dance. And then, yeah, basically that. So they usually have these ceremonies, the, the traditional ceremonies, uh, such as uh, the introduction ceremonies where, they, where there is so much like exhibition of these cultures the dancing, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the stories of how they came about, all those things. And it's actually so nice. It's one of the, it's one of the things that bring about so many tourists in this particular country to just have a look at how people like embrace their culture, how people like, like carry on with their day-to-day -day lives in their different like places. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's very interesting to learn about culture of each other because it gives us like a possibility to understand uh, each other more and more, each other's culture and traditions. Yeah. Yes, I actually read that Ugandans are the most welcoming and uh, friendliest people in Africa, according to African economist, and. Uh, I can really see that people are really welcoming and uh, kind. And yeah. it's very important that uh, the food is really you learn. Nice. <laughs> yes, sorry? The food is really very, very nice. <laughs> it, looks yeah, so it looks really <laughs> delicious and makes us hungry actually <laughs> yes it's actually yeah. part of the culture so if you want to comment on these pictures please welcome yeah because this is the you can see bananas that's the staple food for the baganda which is the, the i think the, the the largest tribe in uganda then yeah that's matoke matoke and beans, I guess. Yeah, then this is this luo. Yeah, so much to learn. So many of them, I don't even like. I don't know the names in in English. So you just have in to English. go with that. Oh, you can you can say it how it sounds in your language, and we'll just um, listen to it, to your language. It's okay. Okay, on the right side, on the right side of the screen. Uh, this is. Uh, <laughs> The way the banana leaves are folded and then they put the food inside, the sauce inside, and then they try to wrap it. That's called the luombo. The luombo. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I think it's done by most of our tribes in Uganda. And then if, if you look at the picture of this woman having a basket and bananas onto the head, like, I don't know, there is more that this picture will put out. First, to put out how hardworking Ugandan women are, like she's selling off bananas to get some money. So that's how hardworking Ugandan women are. So Ugandans are such hardworking people, and they will do everything with a smile on their face. Just look, look at her with that beautiful smile on. So that's what Ugandans are, and that's what mm. makes us proud of Uganda. Mm. The picture portrays so much. Mm. Yeah. The hard work. The Thank love, you so, so much. 
the yeah, fact that you're not head well balanced. It's really so nice. Thank you very much. It was uh, very interesting. And uh, the country is beautiful and people are smiling and uh, you can really see that uh, they yeah. really know how to enjoy their life and how to be happy. And uh, I would like to start the second part of our broadcast. And uh, Derek, I want to give you the floor to ask our very interesting question to our guest. Well, um, thank you so much, Olga, and I'm very happy to pose the next question to our guest. So the question is, what do you think about the creative society? What do you think about the society where everyone is equal, where uh, people get equal opportunities, where everyone is loved and where everyone matters? What do you think about that? And how, how, like, how do you think we could achieve it? Um, I'll, I'll start maybe with um, Arthur. Okay. So how I envision stated it well, happy people working together and trying to see that they are achieving everything together. So in this creative society, No, no, no. we have to look at they work together the young people the grown-ups the the, the the men the women all of them working together to uh, achieve one particular goal and that's a that's a happy society for us to be happy in our societies we need to work together we need to do everything together we need to respect each other to respect the values the cultures of everyone to embrace everyone's allergies the way they are like you accept them in community you be tolerant to each other and in that way that's how we can oh that's how i envision the creative society a society where the young people um have a voice where the women have a voice where the men accept that they are equal with the rest of the the, the gender like something like that so we accept our mistakes in the creative society, we work on them, and we put up a struggle to bring about their contribution to that particular creative society. Creative society, a happy society, um, an equal society. Um, thank you so much, I think that's it. Thank you so much, Arthur. Those are such beautiful and wisely put out words. Uh, maybe we should pass on the mic to Andrew also give us what he thinks about the creative society. How should a community that is following the guidelines and rules of a creative society should be? So please, uh, Andrew, go ahead and tell us what you think. Uh, thank you. Uh, the creative society is uh, is coexist where we are able to live in, in harmony. Uh, the most important value to me of the eight is the first one, uh, the value of human life. And I think in, in a society where we are able to, to see value in every human being, uh, then we are able to exist in harmony. And in the creative society, it gives us the whole opportunity therefore to be able to appreciate people for who they are and be able to exist in, in harmony with one another. And I think that is a very beautiful thing for us as people to be able to live together, to be able to tolerate one another, despite our weaknesses, despite our shortcomings. If we are able to live together because we value each other, and that, I think that's a very beautiful uh, life. And I, I envision such kind of life in the creative society, where each and everyone is respected, where we are able to live in harmony. With each other, despite the differences that we might have with each other. Mm. Thank you. Thank you so much, Andrew. Well, for now, I'm speechless. Maybe I should ask Olga to take on the next part because after hearing from Andrew and Arthur, I can't, I can't really talk more about the Creative Society. Oh, maybe there is still something you want to add. 
from your uh, point of view? <laughs> um, I think from my point of view, I think everything has been mentioned because if you look at a society where everyone is respected, where people live in harmony, that's the society everyone would like to live in. And that's the creative society everyone would want to be part of. So I literally don't have anything to add on. I think Andrew and Arthur have said it all. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you very much. Yeah, can I ask a question? What can each of us do to achieve this uh, type of society? Uh, and what can, we, what can be done for more people to learn about the idea of creative society all around the world in the near future? I think what can be done is very simple. Yeah, because I believe living in a creative society starts with one individual. Respect your neighbor, love your neighbor, and tolerate your neighbor. That's the very like, first step towards achieving a creative society. Then from an individual level, it can spread to a society level, and that's one way we can preach because the best way of preaching is by leading an example. That's the very first like approach to towards a creative towards creating a creative society. We need to contribute whatever we can contribute towards the building of a society. And one of the best ways is one that I mentioned earlier, starting at an individual level and nurturing all those that are around us to vision the creative society we envision. We share ideas, we listen to each other, we work together, we listen to everyone. We have to know that everyone's voice matters, their actions do matter. And in that way, we can and we shall attain a creative society. Then secondly, um, Secondly, we can look at, I'll look at the very first aspect of human life and how we can achieve it. Look at how you're valuing your life and then you should know that it's the same way you should value someone else's life. If you cannot value your own life, that means you cannot value someone else's life. So for us to have respect for human life, for us to have a creative society, we have to like each and everything has to start at an individual level. And, and I think that's the best approach. Before we do the preaching, the speaking, the public speaking, the you no know, discussions, we have to start with ourselves. We have to start with family. We have to start with friends. We have to start with classmates. And then the, the good news of a creative society can spread to each and every one of us. Thank you. Thank you so much, Andrew. Those are such wise words. As well, as I've always said, um, the change we want to see should start with us. We should always be part of the solution towards any challenges that we are facing. So just as Andrew has said, it should start with us. The kind of um, life we want to live, the kind of a society we want to be in should start with us. If you want to see a society where everyone is respected, everyone is uh, given equal opportunities, start, start doing it. Give someone uh, opportunities, respect them. So it should start with you. And I want to invite um, Andrew to give us what he thinks should be done towards achieving a creative society. Actually, I think that because of some technical moments, uh, we don't have Andrew with us, maybe because of internet connection. Uh, so um, thank you guys yeah, for such a constructive uh, conversation we have today. Thank you. Yes, and, thank uh, you very much. I just wanted to add something. And uh, what you said, uh, I really agree with everything you guys uh, said also. And uh, people will have respect to each other and tolerance and... Uh, um, they will appreciate uh, their, uh, other people's life as their own also when there's love, when we love each other, when uh, we love other person as we love ourselves and uh, 
this way, there is no res there is always a respect. There is always uh, adequate uh, attitude to other people and uh, tolerance to differences and so on. Just uh, this little something I wanted to add to your beautiful conversation there. I also wanted to mention uh, that uh, there is an article came out on the Latra United.com website with uh, the eight foundations of the Creative Society. And uh, the, that's, the, that's the one on the screen. Uh, our viewers and uh, our guests, uh, if they uh, want, can read this article in full if they're interested. And uh, I just want to mention that we already talked to several found main foundations of the Creative Society, which uh, are essential, which are pillars for uh, existence of our society in unity, in peace, in love, with uh, no wars, no hunger, no fear for the future. And uh, thank you very much. Uh, we just uh, randomly discussed uh, some of them. Uh, actually, I want to add that this is really very important article because it really gives on us, each person, an understanding what role he or she plays in the formation of such a society, of creative society, a uh, society of happy people. It shows uh, us stages how we people can uh, like uh, build this creative society and uh, it shows a pain foundation, as uh, Olga has already mentioned about uh, which are like foundation of this creative society. So um, would you like to add something, maybe uh, touch some spheres of creative society because there is social sphere, there is uh, um, economical sphere, there is uh, education particularly or uh, health care. Would you like to add something to this, you know, the picture of the perfect society where people will feel like uh, well-treated human beings um, in a society uh, where, um, where actually we have possibilities and in a society where we feel responsible for these possibilities we have and we can actually use it. Would you like to add something on those fears or? Okay, um, mainly, mainly um, as a person who believes in individual efforts, adding up to, to contribute towards achieving a greater goal, or mainly education. Education, it's what, it's what, it's the beginning of our creation of the result that we are here to see from each and every person. The way we grow up, we attend school, we, are, we learn so much from parents, we learn so much from our elders as we grow, that all matters and that's all education. So that education is something that I would like to emphasize more or to add something to it today in the creation of our creative society. Education is key Education is very important, but it's not about just education. It goes down to what kind of education that is passed on, what skills are passed on to someone, what lessons are we learning from the past? What, am I, what inspiration am I learning from a particular lesson, from education? It all comes back to that individual level. In education, I believe there is that there, is, there are like two roles. There's a teacher and then there's a student. There's a learner and then there is a teacher, right? Something like mm -hmm. that. So both these people, all these groups of people have a great role to play in creative society that, and the learner. The learner is taking up or is being inspired from that particular education taken. If we start preaching violence, then we start preaching intolerance, we start preaching discrimination, it's taken up by an individual and then people and the entire 
society is all in chaos and preach unity. We, we can preach peace. We can preach tolerance to differences. We can preach, I don't know, like each and everything, like tolerate, like respect for human life, respect for everyone's values, democracy, all those things. It's what the learner takes up to another learner, something like that. Because today you're a teacher, tomorrow you're a learner. Learning never ends, learning continues like each and every time. And the learner is never going to be, sorry, the learner is a teacher at a certain point. So what is taken from a certain point, it's taken to the other point. And I think this is like key in a creation of a creative society, how everything like moves on. It's like a system and everything rotates around education. Like what I learn, what do I teach? What do I spread? I spread what I learn. Is it peace? Is it war? Is it happiness? Is it sadness? This is all something that matters and education is really key. So if I'm going to add anything about these fears, then my emphasis will be on education because the younger generation, the existing generations, and then the younger generations are going to be the older generations of tomorrow and they will be in position to teach the younger generation of then. So we have to look into education and in the creative society, education is key. I repeat that and I emphasize it like over and over again. And I thank Alatra TV so much for always sharing people's experiences so that the others can learn from them, so that the young people can learn from young people. The young people speaking up, they're representing young people, they're representing the things that are affecting them. The grown up speaking up, they are teaching the younger generation not to repeat the mistakes that have been made. It's something that I admire so much about Alatra TV and I'm really so happy to be here today, sharing a few things and learning so much from my host and my colleague who has been hosted. Thank you very much. It was great that you mentioned uh, education and I actually think this is really essential. I think you're right, because uh, if we, oh, we all learners and we all teachers, we meet people around and uh, we sometimes act as a teacher to others and others act as a teachers to us. And uh, children are in an environment when they learn and they learning uh, according to what they see around them. If, uh, of course, and media also plays the huge role in this because what uh, we see around plus what we see on TV, um, but we showed very narrow information on media uh, of what's going on in other countries. Like, for example, I've never seen anything about uh, some African countries on TV, maybe not never, but it's very rare and narrow and uh, limited information about what's really going on in other countries, about the best of the countries, about the best experiences we can take from other countries. And uh, I wish we had more of those uh, on our TVs. And uh, what, what do you think media, what role media plays in uh, our society and uh, creative society? Um. I wouldn't say that I think, but I think it's kind of, sorry, but I would be like, it's evident that media plays a huge role in the, in this society, in the creative of this, in the building of this creative society, because we are in an era where the world is emphasizing so much uh, on access to information, where everyone should have access to information, internet playing the biggest role in this because internet has united the, the, the North Pole to the South Pole, Uganda to, to Ukraine, Ukraine to all countries. Like I'm just trying to bring up an example, but it's really like, it has made, it, it has made the world a small field. It's a huge role if I look at via media, reflects on how I'm going to react. If I'm watching violence taking place in another country, then I'm going to, I don't know, it depends on how I perceive it. If it's inspirational to me, and let me say like, there is a, 
there is a genocide on media. Okay, let me just talk about the genocide. Yes. So media, one person posts about hatred toward a particular group of people and that person is influential. I know about that person and then I get that bias to that particular group that is talking ill about. So I get to spread the same thing to my like colleagues like in the area. Then the hatred spreads from one influencer on social media to me and to my friends, to their friends and then like that. And then you realize that one group is attacking the other, which shows that everything started from media. Everything started from one person through media. Media plays a huge role whereby it either preaches or promotes positive, positive reactions in, among people, or it brings about chaos. So media plays a huge role because like I talked about education, media is also an education platform. And in this case, it plays the role of a teacher. And then the person who's watching media is the learner. So after learning from media, I become the teacher. I teach someone else and then all, all, everything back to media. So basically that I feel like media has a huge role to play for us to be happy, we connect through media, we speak, I can smile with everyone, like through video calls, through phone calls, good information, but then we should not also ignore the fact that the negative things can also be spread through media. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And actually we all are reporters because we all have social uh, medias, we all have uh, accounts, and we all, like you said, we choose what we spread, something positive or something negative. And our friends and friends of our friends pick this up and spread it around or they stop it and uh, not spread it if they don't like this information. So I also want yeah. to invite you, want to offer you to uh, watch the video of uh, a little video of short answers of different people from around the world, um, what, what answer they gave of how they see creative society. And would you like, would, would it be interesting for you to watch this short video on uh, creative society answers of other people? Yeah, I would really much love to watch it. Okay, great. So let's watch it guys and uh, enjoy it. I think that the most precious thing uh, should be human life and human happiness. Let's work on the positive impacts and let's develop them and let's develop the good and the positive vibes in the society. I think that the creative society, it begins with the respect. I find that when people are sincere and they're practicing random acts of kindness and really embracing each other's differences and learning more about each other's cultures. It just brings about a better understanding. The proportion of love in the human heart is the key point in change of society. Honesty, respect and trust, I would say that uh, these would be the building blocks all together we can do a better society for the future. Every um, opportunity should be equal for everyone. And together working in collaboration, together a beautiful society can be created. You know, uh, in this life, when you live, you live the day as it's the last day in life. You do good deeds, and you do your best if you don't look for something in return. You just do it. Everybody wants to be the best they can be, which is very positive, and I'm honored to be a part of that society. But I do think that if we share ideas and people get together to solve things, things can be changed, and very fast and drastically. It's not a dream. 
so that everybody can live uh, happy and in love. It's real. I mean, it's happening right now. Thank you so much. Thanks to our technical support. Beautiful, <laughs> amazing insights. Yeah, thank you. I want to say that uh, we really live in a great time of modern technology. And by using it, we can uh, share with our vision. And want to say that uh, the faster more people around the world uh, will learn about this beautiful idea of creative society, uh, the faster it will be implemented and achieved. So uh, I would like to invite you guys uh, to invite your friends, relatives, uh, neighbors, co-workers uh, to join this beautiful initiative and idea of creative society. And uh, uh, Olga, I'm giving you the floor. Yes, I, I can say that this is very easy to do nowadays because again, of the modern technologies, you can simply uh, go to alatraunites.com website Click the join button, choose the language you speak in, choose the way you would like to participate. And here you are with us now all together as one team. And together we can do much more. Together we are much more powerful. Together we can spread this information about creative society today and believe in it already tomorrow. And uh, Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Thank you, Archer, Derek, Tatiana. Thank you to our technical support and uh, interpreters. Thank you very much, and uh, see you tomorrow. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, and dear viewers, if you want to be the part of our next live broadcast, please send us an email using the address you're seeing right now on the screen. And don't forget to share with this video using two hashtags, Alatra Unites, and creative society. Together, we can really do a lot. Together, we can really build this creative society, society of happy people. Thank you. Thank you. Are we still live or is it done?